Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. This is episode number two of my Photoshop Swiss Army Knife series. Now, I'm referring to the TK7 combo and the CX panels, how they can really help you to uh, speed up your workflow. I'll be working with the TK7 CX panel today, but the combo panel is identical. It's just laid out differently. Today we're going to start out working with this area of the panel. Now I won't cover everything today in this section, but I'm going to cover most of my favorite uh, parts in this section here. And we'll have several videos going over this entire panel, but I don't want to overburden you with too much information up front, so let's get started. Well, I guess the first thing I need to do is open up a document. Now, normally what I would do is come up here to file and click open. The file browser comes up, select the document and click open. I'm just going to cancel. But with the uh, TK7 combo or CX panel, I could come up and click on this icon right here. And the file uh, browser opens up and then I can just click on my document, click open. And voila, I'm ready to start. As a side note, I generally start my editing process from Lightroom and then come into Photoshop, but there are other times when I just need to open up a document, something I've already started working on and I just want to continue working on it, and that's where this icon really comes in handy. Now let's turn our attention to this icon right here. I'm going to hold the Option or Alt key down so we can see the Help menu here. And this says, opens a menu with different adjustment layer choices. Click one to insert the adjustment layer above the current active layer or in the current active group. Or if you Control or Command, click to insert the adjustment layer at the top of the layer stack. So you have different options there. Now this Help system is going to be very helpful for you. But let's go ahead and click this icon. And inside of this icon, we're going to see a bunch of different adjustment layers. And I'm going to hold my Option key down and hover over these. Here's your Curves adjustment, a typical adjustment that we use all the time. Here's a Levels adjustment. Here's a Brightness Contrast adjustment. Whoops. And next up, we have a Hue Saturation adjustment. And then a Black and White adjustment, a Photo Filter. Here's a Color Balance, a Vibrance. And we also have Selective Color. We have Exposure, and then we have Channel Mixer, and we have an Invert. This creates an Invert Adjustment Layer. All right, but let's start out and put a uh, Curves Adjustment Layer on this image. And after clicking the icon, you can see I have a Curves Adjustment Layer, and now I can make adjustments. Now, this tutorial is not about how to make these adjustments. It's about how easy it is to get to adjustments using the uh, TK7 Combo and CX panels. And of course, the traditional way of getting that adjustment would be to come down here and click on this icon and find our adjustments in here. But Tony has put most of the adjustments that we typically as photographers use right inside of this uh, group right here. All right. Let's now go to this next icon here. Now I'm going to hold my option key down and hover over this. This is a live clipping action. First click creates a layer at the top of the layer stack that shows clipped shadows in blue and clipped highlights in red. Clicking the button a second time deletes the live clipping layer from the layer stack. This is really cool. Let me show you how this works. First off, we'll click this icon and now we notice we have a gradient map adjustment layer right here and it says live clipping. Now let's see how this works. Let's go to our Curves Adjustment Layer here, okay? I'm going to take this Highlight Slider and start to move it to the left and watch what happens as I start to move it to the left. As I start to move it to the left, all of a sudden you'll see, oh look, I'm clipping my highlights right there. See them turning red? Whenever you see that red, that's your warning for clipped highlights. So you'd want to back it off till, those, till that clipped highlight goes away. So right there. Now, what about shadows? What if I'm clipping my shadows? Right now, I'm not clipping my shadows, but let me show you what happens when the shadows are clipped. I'm going to take this shadow slider and start to move it to the right. And when I move it to the right, I'm going to hit a point where the shadows start to clip. See things turning blue here? That lets you know you are clipping your shadows. And sometimes you want to clip your shadows. You Obviously, you don't want to clip your highlights because when you're printing, you're just going to have white paper there. And that doesn't look good generally in a print. So you generally never want to clip your uh, highlights, but shadows sometimes you do. So, But if you don't want any clipped shadows, you just can take the slider and I can move it back to the left and just stop when the shadow 
when the blue goes away from the shadow. So I know I have no clip tie lights and I have no clip shadows. Now, when I'm all said and done, all I have to do is come back up to this uh, icon here, click it, and that live clipping layer goes away. And you could uh, use this uh, action anywhere in your process that you want, just to make sure your shadows and highlights are staying just the way you like them. You could do it at the beginning, middle, anywhere along the way, and at the end, just check it to make sure you haven't clipped anything. You're going to love this action. To me, this action is worth its weight in gold. Moving onward, now we're going to come up to the TK logo here. Now, you may think this is just Tony's logo, and it is, but if you click it, you're going to see there is something inside of it, and there's a bunch of settings, and we're going to go over these settings right now. First off, we have this color adjustment right here. And basically what this adjustment is doing, any uh, button that has color to it, you can adjust how much color is there. For instance, uh, you can shut the color off, see where it says save, that was green. Or you could give it any uh, amount of color that you like. If you just like a small amount of green there, just keep it down. If you like a lot, you can take it the whole way up to the top. I like mine somewhere just under the center here. So you can adjust that according to your taste. Now we're going to come to this uh, section right here, Selection Indicator. Right now it's on Fix. This is a drop-down menu. Let me click it and open it up. You have uh, different choices, Fixed, Pulse, Animated, or Off. I leave mine on Fixed, and I highly recommend that if you own a Mac computer, leave it on Fixed. Tony tells me that on Mac machines, if you have the Selection Indicator on Pulse or Animated, you could have some issues when you're working uh, with Luminosity Mass. That's not a problem from Tony. It's a problem from Photoshop. So if you're a Mac user, leave it on Fixed. If you're a Windows user, you could put it on Animated or Pulse. It's truly up to what you like. Now, what the Selection Indicator does, anytime you make a selection, if you have fixed on, you're going to see some red dashed lines above this panel right in this area right up in here. It's just going to let you know you have a selection made. Because a lot of times what Tony does is he hides his selections when you're painting on masks and things like that. So you don't see the marching ants. It makes it easier to see where you want to paint. And so Tony will hide those selections. But those indicators let you know, hey, a selection has been made. So sometimes if you don't shut those selections off after you're done with an adjustment, it's going to affect your next adjustment. And you're going to say, what the heck is going on here? But when you see uh, an indicator, either a fixed indicator or a pulsing indicator, it's going to let you know, hey, a selection has been made. And all you have to do is... Uh, Shut that selection off and you'll be good to go. In case you're confused about what I just said, let me show you what I'm talking about. So let me go ahead and X out of this uh, settings here. And let's go ahead and make a selection. I'm going to grab a marquee tool and make a simple selection. And now what I'm going to do is hide that selection. I'm just going to use this action right here to hide the selection. This will hide your selection. The selection will still be made. I'm going to hide it. But just notice my red dash lines up here letting me know I have a selection made. Now I'm going to hide that selection. That selection's still there. We just can't see the marching ants. But when we see this red indicator, this dash line, that lets me know I have a selection made. All right. And if I go ahead and reveal my selection again by clicking the same button, you can see there's that selection, right? So I can hide it and reveal it with this button right here. I know I didn't want to get into this area here, but it goes along with the selection indicator, okay? And if we wanted to totally get rid of a selection, like we don't see a selection, and say you're making adjustments and your adjustments aren't working out for you because you have a selection made and you see this indicator on, just click this button right here. It'll remove the selection. The indicator will go out. So remember that this is very, very helpful, that selection indicator. There's a couple more things I'm going to show you inside of the TK logo here. And you could change your languages of the panel right here. And this icon is really nice right here. So if I hold the option key down and hover over it, opens the default web browser to a URL for additional tutorials and videos from Tony's uh, website. So that's cool. And there's copyright material that you'll see when you click this button. We've already looked at this icon. It just opens up a open dialog so you can open up a file. This next icon here, if I hold my option or all key down and hover over it, new document opens the new dialog window to create a new document. Next up, we're going to look at these two buttons right here. But before I do that, let me come up here and add a new adjustment layer. Let's add, say, like a photo filter just for the heck of it. 
okay, so I'm going to add a photo filter and it adds it to that layer right there. Or, you know, I could have came down to the adjustment layers and done it down here. But why go there when I have this action? It's real easy to get to. So I'm just going to go ahead and add just that warm tone filter. You know, you could change different filters in here. You can do cooling. But in my case, I think I want to do warming. Let's do that one right there. Let's just adjust the amount. Okay. Now these buttons up here, what we can do is we can step back by going to this button, like rewind. So we can step back. We can see the before. We can step back one more time. And that's before the filter was even applied. Let's step forward. That's my first adjustment. Step forward again. There's my second adjustment. So I like to think of these as like my before and after adjustments. So these are very handy. And not saying I would even put a photo filter on here, but in this case, I think it's a little too much. So I'm going to pull back on the density and maybe just add a slight bit of warming to it. Now I could apply a luminosity mask, but we're not getting into that today. This is on the combo Swiss Army knife. And I hope you can see now why I like to call this my Swiss Army knife because you can do so much with it. But now we can go step back and see here's the before, stronger adjustment, and step forward, here's a lesser adjustment. All right, now I want to show you, we're going to finish up with these uh, four buttons right across here. And I love these buttons, and I think you'll come to love them too. This first button, when you click it, it fits the image to screen. Pretty nice, right? The second button right here will zoom your image in 100%. So there's that one. And again, we could fit it back to screen. Now, then we have a plus zoom and a minus zoom. So we could zoom in as much as we like. We could zoom back out with a negative. Okay. And at any time, we can always come back and fit it to screen. So I use these buttons a lot and I really love them. Well, there it is, everyone. I wanted to cover all this section today. I didn't get there. I only got up to this point. But I didn't want this tutorial going too long. And I hope you can see the value of the TK7 combo and TK7 CX panels. Whichever one you choose to use, you only have to use one of them, depending on the way you like to set up your Photoshop. Again, I like to call it the Photoshop Swiss Army Knife. As you can see, you can do so much to speed up your workflow using these panels. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like, share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click the bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Gully.